Hello. So, um, this is one of my six EXPs at the moment. This is, uh, well, number four. Um, but in my heart, it will always be number two. And on paper, it will always be number two. What this is, is a 1982 Ford EXP convertible. So what Ford did was they hired out Dynamic Conversion in Hillsdale, Michigan to make only eight of these. This one is number two of those eight. Um, so there were only four, or sorry, there were only eight EXPs uh, that Ford wanted to be made into convertibles. And Mercury wanted 28 about LN7s to be convertibles. But Mercury did it themselves uh, while Ford hired it out. So, this is my baby. It's number two of eight. Like I said, um, I, I can't remember if I've seen one of the other seven or not. I've seen a few LN7 convertibles. I've seen uh, photos of like three out of the 28, uh, but I've only seen one or two of these from Dynamic Conversions and a, then a few other private uh, companies. Um, so I'm still currently restoring my blue 82 EXP. So this one's a little bit on the back burner. I got this one in February of 2017. All the way over in Michigan. Uh, and I live in Wisconsin, so it was a lawn drive. There was a long list of people waiting to get their paws at this thing. But they all turned around um, and, and weren't very decisive uh, when they checked it out uh, for a few different reasons. I'll show you why. But I knew I would throw every penny I have at this to make it perfect. Um, still not sure what I want to paint it or what I want to do engine and transmission wise because everything's original right now except for the paint and the interior carpet. This has been repainted. It was originally um, gloss black. I know it's been repainted because the bumper strips are always flat black. These these uh, pinstripes were taped on, not painted on. And then these pillars were almost always flat black. Same with the mirrors. The mirrors were almost always flat back black, but you could pay extra to have them color match to your body, but these were almost never painted the same color as the body. Almost always flat black. So, um, I'm sure in the video you can see a few things around here. There's some nasty rust spots here and there, and there's some nasty cracking. Um, some of this was apparent when I got it. Some of it has been growing in the year of my ownership. This uh, previous owner had it for two to five years, something like that. Maybe it was two to seven years. Um, and it, it spent a lot of time outside, but most of most of its life was, or most of the last few years, it's been sitting inside. Until the year I got it, it sat outside for a few months at the least. Um, but I know it's been inside for a, a while because Dash has absolutely no cracks and I plan on keeping it that way. I took, I, I have a cover to fill this in, don't worry about it, but I, I pulled it off so I could make that decent video. Uh, so I'll put that back in the second I'm done because that interior is the best interior I have. Um, which is the way it goes because this exterior is the worst I have 
uh, same goes with some of my other EXPs, great interior or bad body. Bad body, great interior. So this is, like I said, this is all original still, so this is still the <clears throat> 1.6CVH, non-high output, uh, with 4-speed manual, all carbureted, pre-computers, everything. Um, catalytic air pump, because this has no AC. Um, I don't think it has power steering. I could be wrong, I haven't looked into it yet. But I don't think it has power steering. Uh, no AC for sure. Um, I think on the fender tag, I know on the fender tag it would say, yeah, manual transmission, no power steering, no AC. It doesn't have the California emissions controls uh, system like my blue, blue one does. Uh, but something unique, aside from obviously it being a convertible, is black vinyl high backs. All my EXPs are uh, the cloth low backs, and then I have a set of seats out of an 83, which are vinyl low backs. So these are the vinyl high backs, and they're, they're, they're in great shape, honestly. One tear here, one tear here. That's it. I'll take it. No problem. So let me hop into the car with you. Uh, you can see they cut out the window frame. So this is a frameless window. I'll close that. And I want to get the sun off me because it's awfully hot today. It's been a long winter and I got a bad feeling it's going to be a long summer. So yeah, here's here's what my interior looks like. Well, like I said, nothing's really faded too bad. Like the only interior damage is that crack there. And then someone ran some screws through my glove box, but I'll, I'll have that fixed. Like I said, no AC. Uh, I can't remember if the clock works or not. I have to look into that. Um, my sun visors are a little warped from all the moisture has collected in here over the years but i think that's also helped save the dash um four speed like i said all the gauges and lights work uh radio doesn't install a switch here that i think turns on and off the radio um so i'm going to replace this panel with a uh, non-modified one and i will i will actually put a switch in here It'll be on the back side, and it won't be for the radiator. It'll be for the fan uh, over fan relay override switch uh, that I made a video about um, not so long ago. You can see my floor pan has been patched, and even though it's been patched, there's still tons of rust and many many holes. Um, I might need new seat rails. I'm pretty sure I do. Uh, I got I got a, I got some that I can fix up, um, but yeah, just so much rust, so much rust. Nothing on the previous owners. That's just what happens when you own a car in Michigan. Uh, this car was undercoated. I'll get underneath it and show you in a while, but it was undercoated. Uh, I do, I do have that that panel that fills in the the center console. It's it's in the back here. I just took it off so I could remove the carpet because the carpet was uh, generic black The molded carpet was lawn since gone, but my rear carpet pad is still there and in one piece um, Part of the deal for making this a convertible was to make this fiberglass boot uh, to house all, all the convertible arms and uh, fabric and what I did was I held these sticks in here uh, to keep my fabric from sagging over time. And it's been saving my roof. My roof is actually turning back into uh, normal. Because it wasn't quite a disrepair from uh, water sitting in it and freezing. So then you get this, these giant lakes up top. So...
Uh, that's the tool you use to uh, release your hard, uh, your uh, rig top. Get those out of the sun. I've only had the cover off for, let's see, 10 minutes now. And shit's already getting hot. So, I'll slide this off. Yikes, even that's getting hot. God dang. So, pulling the top off, I can do it inside once in a while. I'm not the strongest kid on the block, so what works best is to uh, turn it, release it, and then you just flop it down like so. Now and then you have full full access inside and outside of your car. Um, I, I do want the keys though, because I want to show you a few other things. Uh, these seats still have the same f functions and features as the other seats, except for adjustable headrest. So they still scooch back and forth like really far. Um, they still tilt forward and backwards really far. Um, tail lights are near perfect. I have an even better set I can throw on here. We'll see. Um, I also think I have... I might have a really nice set of black ones that I can throw on there. Um, but that is as far as the trunk opens. Um, cause like I said, they kind of had to cut the hatch to put this in here. Uh, so then they just did a generic hinge thing, nothing complicated. There's no geometry involved in it. Um, but yeah, someone already did my pex trick. <laughs> or maybe I did that, someone did that. Um... Yeah, I think it was me. I did that pick strip trick. Um, yeah, everything inside is what I found in here. Um, there was a lot of extra stuff in here that I threw out. But, yeah. See, I did the pex trick thing and it's still not working right. Because when they did the generic hinging of the, the trunk, uh, the geometry of it coming down is way different because now it hinges here instead of up here where most DXPs would be hinging because it's a, a whole hatch. So it comes down kind of funny and it never comes down the same exact way, which means uh, the trunk is almost never closed. Uh, when I restore it, I'll be getting to that. You see the clear coat starting to pop already. <sighs> you know, black car in the sunlight. That's what happens. But, um, yeah. Uh, they had to move the speakers too because the speakers actually go right where the boot is over the interior panels. Um, but I got all the parts to make this a different interior if I wanted to, but... I don't want to cut up back panels because they are not replaceable. Uh, so I just end up painting everything, but I, I don't want to do that. Uh, because I want this to stay true to what it actually was. Uh, oh, someone replaced the, uh, the uh, pleasure mirror there. Um, with some generic thing. I'll fold this back up, it's real easy. You know, just reach and here, grab the top lip, and then it just slowly flops over, and then don't don't slam it. Just get it real close, and then push down on it, firm but slow. And then you just pop back inside, and then you grab your T-bar tool, put back up in there. It can, it can go that way, or that way, or that way. Doesn't really matter as long as it goes in there well. And then you just crank it to the right, righty tighty lefty loosey to tighten it. Because righty tighty lefty loosey. Uh, keys, just set them in there. Um, so this lock it down, it ain't going to go anywhere. And then, and that's about it. We just take out our sun visor.
right there. And then I just saved the interior once again. And then take the strips. It usually works well as if you have the passenger window open as you can slide them out just like that. And then slide them in up and over the stuff. I think I put this one in first. Yep. Let's go over that bar. Gently into there. And then uh, if I had more time, I had to work this under there like that. So then that bar is stretching across all three of those. And then what you can do with this one. I have it up over here. Work it over the latch there. And then work it just like that. And now you won't have water pulling up in the center. And it will not want to pull up in the back there. So, it's just like that. Um, I will be ordering a car cover soon. I'm still playing around with fitment on the other ones I got for the XPs. Um, you can see my roof doesn't quite fit right in, anymore. So it's, it's been tearing ever since before I got it. Um, the Velcro thing, it's nice. It's not worn out or anything, surprisingly, but uh, this is just... It, it fights so much that it just rips it right off of there. So, that's it. Um, start re restoring this in the fall. You can see I got a lot of work to do. Um, I'll, I'll roll my window up and I'll quick show you um, what well, it's like underneath. But, uh, yeah, I, I drove it, I, I didn't drive it back, I towed it back on the trailer all the way from uh, the Dutch. Troy area, I think it's like uh, New, New Harbor, New Harbor, something like that. Not, not very far away from uh, Hillsdale, where, where this thing was uh, con conceived and constructed. Trailered it back all the way to Wisconsin. And, yeah. Ugh. So I got a lot of work to do, as you can see. Uh, but I towed it all the way back to Wisconsin and then pulled it off the trailer in February. And then the next day we, we were towing it uh, to a safe place where it could sit um, for a while. I think, I, I think we were towing it straight into the garage the, the day after we got it. And Dad said, uh, put it in the third gear, let out on the clutch while we were towing it. And we did that and the engine started to spin over. Like, great. Threw the clutch back in. Um, that weekend, uh, we tossed a battery in it. Tiny bit of gas. And then filled it. Uh, then turned the key, it started to rain perfect. 